Hi everybody, I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. Today, I want to talk about Tiny Frontiers Revised, which is a fantastic minimalist space opera RPG by Alan Barr from Gallant Night Games. Uh, I don't have a PDF, I've got this hard copy, and I'm excited to talk about it. The uh, Tiny D6 game engine is one that I've talked about before. Uh, I did a review of Beach Patrol, which is, you know, lifeguards on the beach. And this is the same rule set, but applied to outer space. The game is very simple. If you want to do something, you roll two six-sided dice, and if you roll at least one five or six, you succeed. If the action is especially hard for you, and you have disadvantage, you only roll one die. If the action would be particularly easy for you for any reason, uh, you roll three dice. That's it. Uh, that's the whole game. Uh, combat is very simple. There's a couple of extra things you can do, like flee or take cover, but uh, the rules are incredibly minimal, incredibly quick to play, and a character can actually be, uh, you know, made up in a couple of minutes and written on a 3x5 card and you're ready to go. So, why do you need the actual book if I just told you how it works? Well, because the book is full of really neat stuff. Uh, for one thing, the book has a huge list of heritages. Uh, that is the word that they are using for different species, uh, which is really neat. So you've got humans. Humans have six hit points, and they get an extra trait from the list. That's it. That's the whole class. A gen is kind of like a, uh, a human, but they're genetically engineered to be better warriors, so they get six hit points, and instead of picking any trait they want off the list, they get Master of Warfare. There's an Autoborg, where there's a, you know, Kalumra, Salamar, all these neat little aliens, and Every heritage is very simple. It tells you how many hit points you get, and it gives you one or two little traits. And that's it. Uh, at the end of the list, there is... Um, at the end of the list of heritages, there is a bunch of traits. And you get to pick three of these per character. So, Cleave, Dark Fighter, uh, Educated, Engineer... You just kind of use these and you cobble them together and you say, well, that's my character. He doesn't have the kind of crunchiness or the depth that a lot of other games have. But what's great about the Tiny D6 system is that it doesn't need any of them. You can sit down with a group of friends and say, let's play a space opera game. We're all a crew. I want to be the captain. I want to be the engineer. I want to be the pilot, blah, blah, blah. You can go through this list of heritages and of traits and have characters inside of five minutes, probably less than that. And then you can play. And because it's done in very broad strokes, where just being the engineer is a trait unto itself, uh, it, it does everything you need it to do, but super simply, super easily, plays really well. The uh, next thing, and I should point out that some of the traits are flavored. There's cybernetic traits, there are psionic traits, so there's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, it talks about weapons, it talks about enemies, and it gives some really neat charts for the game master to use when they're adding enemies to their game. Uh, what kind of enemies and what do they do, what is the planet like? Lots of, you know, random settlement generators. Uh, really helpful stuff for the Game Master to be able to do this kind of pick-up-and-play style game. Uh, there are optional rules for hacking. There's extra rules for armor. And then we have the Starship creation. This is really neat, and it's handled more or less like character creation. So you will essentially just pick a chassis, and they have... Striker class, which is little, you know, crew of up to 12 people. Scout class, which is a little larger, uh, crew of up to 150. Cruiser class, all the way up to carrier class. You pick those, 
it's got uh, it tells you how many systems you get so let's say you have chosen just a little ship for your crew to go around on striker class ship it gives it has its own trait uh, which in this case is called a chassis system uh, which is agile dodge which makes you you know very agile in combat and then you get one sensor system two weapon systems one defense system and two movement systems and you go back and you look at the system lists and you put it together and you're done and it's so simple and I love it so the rest of the book the whole back half of it is taken up with what is called micro settings and some of these are entire settings some of them are just adventures or scenarios some of them are specific locations explored in detail but there's a bunch of them there's uh, 10 or 12, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, exactly, uh, written by a lot of really great authors, and I must admit, I'm one of them. I have a micro setting in this book. So um, one of my favorite ones here was called The Blood Arcs. Um, so let me show you that one. These... This is something that the Tiny D6 system uses a lot. These uh, this concept of micro settings, where you know it gives you the rules, it gives you the basic gameplay, it gives you anything else you need for the flavor of the game. Obviously, a space opera is different than Beach Patrol, and so there's a couple of different uh, you know little add-ons that it gives you, like those hacking rules or cybernetics. Uh, and then there's a bunch of micro settings in the back and each of these is five or six pages at the very most and uh, it just kind of says if you have your own idea for what kind of space opera you want to tell jump in and do it if you want some guidance here's 12 awesome ideas so the blood arcs by elizabeth chai pradit cool is um the idea that there were six ships of humans. Earth was destroyed and so these six giant colony ships went out into the galaxy trying to find a new homeland and didn't really find anything and so they all came back and now you know a few hundred years later they have established their own cultures, their own ways of doing things, their own ideas and so when they return and they come back together again they are intensely opposed to each other. Each of them thinks that they are the real heir of humanity and that everyone else is some kind of pretender or uh, that they are not doing things right. And so essentially you have a house war. There are six major houses of spacefaring humans all living on these big planets and sometimes they will fight with each other, sometimes they will scheme against each other, uh, they have some very specific rules about how conflicts are supposed to be resolved. And it's this really neat kind of political uh, scenario setting world that I like a lot. It's got some neat stuff in there. Uh, it has descriptions of what the houses are like. It talks about companions uh, who are essentially, you know, androids or robots and what role they have in the society and how the different places treat them. And so that is a full setting that you can use and then tell your adventures inside of that environment. Um, one of the other ones that I want to show just as a really stark contrast to that is The Station. This one, written by Diana Gunn, this one talks about a very specific space station that is being used uh, for some incredibly shady uh, medical testing. There's a virus and they're trying to do some different things. And so rather than describe an entire setting, this is just one location. And so you've got, again, four or five pages just talking about here's what this virus is, here are the different experiments that they are running on that virus, here's how they are running them, you know, basic layout of the base, what is it like, uh, what different sections are there, what different laboratories are there, a little bit about who the people are, even some named 
NPCs that you can interact with, and then one, you know, very quick potential scenario. It's just a page long. Um, what if you are, and, and what it is in here is a prisoner who has been sent to this station so that they can do their illegal experiments on you with this virus, and you end up infected, and you've got two hours to get to the cure. Go. Um, there's a lot of neat ideas in here. So all of the different ones, uh, the different micro settings, they're all unique. They are formatted in their own way. They have a different focus. Uh, they will give you an entire setting. They will give you one location. Uh, one of them by Steve Diamond is called F The Fixers, which is basically just advice on how to run heist stories in space opera. And so it gives a handful of uh, like adventure ideas and adventure hooks. And then it gives a bunch of advice and a little bit of fiction on this is what a heist story looks like. This is how you can run one. And so they range a whole, you know, they, they run a whole range from setting to location to GM advice to scenario to all these other things. Uh, it's an incredibly useful thing. It takes up, like I said, about half the book. Uh, Tiny Frontiers Revised is really, really great. And if you like space opera, if you want to run space opera, or even if you just need a little game that you can pick up and play with very little prep and have a great time with your friends, Tiny Frontiers Revised is for you. So, thanks for watching this review. I hope you have a chance to check out this game. I guarantee you will enjoy it. I'm Dan Wells, and you are awesome.